Mr. Speaker, I have written a letter to the President of the United States, which I'm sending today, that carries a simple message on behalf of the American people. Mr. President, it is time for you to resign the office of the presidency for the good of the United States and her people. It has become clear to Congress and the American people, especially those of us who do not exclusively watch sanitized versions of the news on the President's most supportive media outlets, that for decades the President led a vast criminal enterprise that went on to engage in criminal activity during the 2016 campaign for the White House and engaged in criminal activity since taking the office of President. The fact is clear. The President is the target of multiple criminal investigations on several fronts. Number one, the violation of federal election laws, including the failure to report payments and contributions as required under campaign finance law. Number two, the violation of tax, banking, and fraud laws related to the Trump Organization and immediate business associates and family members of the President. Number three, apparent involvement and encouragement of the illegal hacking of political opponents during the 2016 campaign and efforts to derail investigations, inquiries since taking the office of president. And number four, working and encouraging and collaborating with a foreign government, Russia, to interfere in the 2016 election in order to help the president's campaign, combined with efforts while in office to obstruct justice in the investigation of the campaign. Those are just four of the criminal conspiracies that point directly to the President of the United States and compromise his ability to continue leading the nation. I have only five minutes to speak, so I don't have the time to enumerate the convictions in federal court of close associates of the President's business interests and campaign, nor the guilty pleas, the plea bargains, or the immunity granted to the President's employees, friends and business associates, including those directly managing his political operation and serving in his White House. And yes, the investigations are still going on, as are the prosecutions, guilty pleas, sentencing of the president's co-conspirators in each of these four criminal matters. And we don't know. There may be many more shoes to drop from local, state, and federal prosecutors because when you start looking under the rocks piled around this president, you find ample evidence of systematic fraud, criminal activity, and cover-up. For me, this has nothing to do with the president's racism, his misogyny, his homophobia, and Islamophobia. It is different than his ties to and support for white supremacy or the voice he lends to the wildest, most discredited conspiracy theories the dark right web and talk radio can come up with. And as ugly as it was to hear, even his stark admission of sexual assault against women is separate from the systematic criminal activity he has clearly engaged in, much of which he himself has admitted unwittingly in television interviews. His policies are clearly damaging to the moral fabric of the American people, but this goes beyond the president's attacks on law enforcement, his giveaway to big polluters and corporations, his defense of the super rich, his assault on federal workers, the plundering of the economy, and the lasting damage he is doing on a daily basis to our most important international relationships with allies and foe like. Vice President Pence, with whom I served in this body, is someone I disagree with on almost every issue of importance, especially his offensive views on homosexuality, women's rights, abortion, race relations, immigration, and almost anything else. But by comparison, he is better, even if he is wrong on many, many policy issues. Therefore, why do I do not relish a Pence presidency? At this point, I feel it is an absolute necessity for the good of the country, for the good of our people, and for the good of the world and America's place in that world. Mr. Speaker, in my letter, I humbly ask, as a proud American, patriot, public servant, a dad, a granddad, and a fellow human being, I ask the president to resign immediately. Please resign and spare the nation from this ongoing nightmare. Don't do this to us. Don't make us go down with you. Step aside, sir, for the good of our country and for the good of the world. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that my letter to the President of the United States asking him to resign be added to the record. Without objection, members are reminded to refrain from engaging in personalities toward the President.
The chair now recognizes.